The only constant in life is change. Sometimes good and sometimes in ways that I really don't like. Nowadays my life is mostly good, however I've lived a very crazy life, alternative lifestyles, and I find myself reminiscing about the past as I've lost a good friend from that said past recently and also I've had quite a bit of death in the last couple years. I'm almost a different person in a way, gaining self-confidence and learning to have better experiences in life by teaching myself about the things that I want to learn. This video is a potential first of a playlist or series of videos concentrating on my past, my experience, strength, and hope in the hopes that somebody actually learns something from it, or if nothing else, that my stories aren't lost to the sands of time. This particular video will be concentrated on the beginning phases of one of my best friends, Ryan who has now deceased. I will never be able to tell an accurate representation of the past, only the stories that I have, my feelings towards them, and try to do my best with my art of video to express what it means and what I learned and what it was. When Sean met Ryan, when Ryan met Sean, I didn't know he had moved to the neighborhood, and to tell you the truth, I was in a major slump. I basically had no friends at the time, and I would see him walking around the neighborhood, and then he would say hi to me, and blah blah blah. And we were very early adults. We were like 19 or something. And honestly, I thought he was there to just smoke my stuff and eat my vitamins, and I probably was right. However, he was very lonely, and I was very lonely, and we related because we both had a broken heart. We instantly connect and it was on the daily routine so the daily routine was that we would borrow his mom's car somehow she would let him borrow the car after she went to work he would come to my house and I had a license so then I would drive him to the pharmacy so he could pick up his yeah start panhandling doing something strange for change was our motto it was just on from there now don't get me wrong we weren't always panhandling I mean we pretty much were but there was a constant need for money it was more like donations support the cause we'd say I did work sometimes so sometimes I had money and sometimes his mom would give him money But no matter what we made things happen and this is the bus stop We would go and this was another spot there would be people here waiting to give us money because they just liked us I guess so we could go buy beer They knew what we were doing with the money and they gave it to us anyway Why I have no idea sometimes some of the cooler ones jump in our car And then we'd go somewhere driving around crazy having a ball after that It was gas money beer money whatever money place to place party to party, beach to parking lot, to the woods, to house. By the end of the night, we would be at some party with some strangers making new friends. Then they would come around the next day, drive around like crazy animals, chickens with their heads cut off, looking for fun and glory. We'd be like, get it. We'd be partying at his mom's house. Then his mom would come back from work and everybody would go silent. Oh, we were totally applying for jobs and stuff, you know, trying to get our lives together. This is one of the spots we would come when we had nowhere else to go. Plotting our plots and thinking about what the next move was, sometimes with like a car full of people, all up to basically what the law would think was no good, but really we had no in ill intentions to anybody. At some point, I was driving the car so much, he just wanted me to park the car in front of my house and then I would go pick him up, which felt really strange at the time and I had only known him for maybe two or three months at the time, but, but we clicked fast and you know, our brains worked like children even though we weren't children, we were like adult children. That led to a DUI which was dropped to an MIP because I was underage and by the way, I had only drank in half a beer. Then it was back to him driving. Smart. You ever meet the right person at the right time, at the right place, when everything is happening in a certain way in your life? Well, that was Ryan for me. I was extremely depressed. I had recently lost a girlfriend. A lot of my friends were either in jail or in another country because of other crazy stuff. Angry at the world. Something that Ryan taught me was that I didn't have to fight. Continually prove myself as a man, and when someone insults me, I could take it on the chin and just let it be. Because life was about fun. Everything was going to go up in flames in 2012 right we kind of banked on that and it was all about like balls to the wall do what you want yeah he changed my life in two different ways one pretty positive way I just explained it the others was when we met it was like vinegar and baking soda we were both on a trajectory and when we met each other it egged each other on induced me to some things that I otherwise probably would have taken at least another couple years to do 
and my intake of certain substances went through the roof. I lived here. I remember there was a friend that lived back there on a different road and we'd run across this dude's lawn and then there was like a vacant lot with a bunch of blackberries. And one time the dude freaked out. The other friend grabbed me because I had twisted my ankle. Yeah, he didn't like us running through his property all the time, but it didn't stop us. No, no, no. And by the time it became a big deal, we ended up moving to Shoreline. Well, in the process of making this video, it really reminded me of what I was like back then and how I thought and how I think so differently now and how I wish I would have thought more like I do now then. I deal with the repercussions of the way I lived my life even now even though it's been many 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 years and I never got in any trouble with the law or anything like that any anything that was major anyways. I never was a thief. I was never a criminal right. I just liked doing mind altering substances. I always was looking for that next dopamine hit that next something that would help me escape my myself from myself and I think I still do but in a more healthy way now with editing and film and walking my dog and there's healthy ways to deal with your emotions when it comes to Ryan I always thought at some point we'd be old men even though we did so many crazy things even though we drank and jumped behind the wheel even though he did this or he did that or we fought about that or he thought something completely crazy. I, I had this vision that we would, we'd all be getting along when we were old, you know, and we'd be reminiscing about the past and talking shit and this and that. And, and that's just not a reality anymore. Loss is forever as far as we know. And hopefully I see him on the other side. Hopefully he's with me now and he forever will have changed my life. It's weird the people that we know throughout life that shapes us. If you let it, life is mostly good. And we can steer the ship in the direction that we want to go but we can't control the current. And it's how we react to that current is what defines us in life and who we want to be. I don't condone any of our behavior from back then. It is what it was. We had a lot of fun then, but it also led to a really dark period in my life. Probably wouldn't have happened if that's what I was doing in my early adulthood and late teenagerhood for that matter before I met my friend. I'll tell you what, man, even though we hadn't talked in a long time and the last time that I had talked to him, he was delusional and accused me of things that were absolutely ridiculous on the day of my grandma's funeral. I didn't talk to him for a year, and then I heard that he passed away. But it still hurts very badly. And when somebody you were so close to at a certain time in your life, at many different times in my life actually, and always would stay in contact, one of us was doing really good, we wouldn't talk. And if the other one was, or if one of us was doing really bad, then we wouldn't talk. But somewhere in the middle, there was a chemical reaction, and we saw eye to eye. He was somebody that we developed our own little worlds together. We saw reality a certain way. We shared experiences in a certain way. If you've ever had a best friend, then you know what I'm saying. And I'm not his only best friend, and he wasn't my only best friend. There, there was a part of me that nobody else understood except for him. And I think there was a part of him that nobody else understood but me. That's lost now. Now that he's gone, I will never connect with anybody in that way again. And that's sad. Highly intelligent. He could have been a doctor. He could have been a lawyer. I think he was just too emotional, caught up in things that happened in his childhood. And we don't know why people are the way they are. I don't even know why I was the way I was. All I know is I will miss him very, very much. And I wouldn't be me without the experiences that I had back then and the experience that came later. I obviously didn't show his face or say his last name, if you know, you know. To his mother, much love. I know it must be extremely hard, much harder than anything I've gone through. Can't imagine the pain. To any of his old friends, you know what I'm saying. You know what this video is about. I don't regret the euphoria. I don't regret the good times. I'm glad that I could enjoy the mind state that I was in. Sometimes you gotta be a particular type of person to have a particular experience. And I'm sure glad that I had my experience with my friend Ryan. I'll forever love you, bro.